Uh, what I've got here is a story. Uh, uh, again, it's a short piece of fiction, about 500 words. Uh, for me, it's a good example of something that I started with that was very, very long. It had lots of conversations and lots of descriptions of the people, and it didn't work quite as well. So for, for me, it was a good example. The same thing about microfiction is, if you're writing microfiction, if you're writing everything that's sort of less than 500 words, it eats up ideas very, very quickly. And uh, this, I can point to where the idea came from. And it was a box on a wall, I was very ill a couple of years ago, and it was a box on a wall in the Western Park Hospital, uh, Ward 3, Room 6. And it just said, uh, disposable polychloropyrene, that's neoprene, exam gloves, a chlorinated polymer coated with a separate USP cornstarch palm coating. They have a thickness of 0.24 millimeters and withstand contact with vincristine for 24 at uh, 240 seconds. And the story came out of that. I'm late, and she's drinking. She usually has a glass or two of wine, uh, but today she's got the whole bottle, and there's less than a glass left. Her long fingers, the hands of a surgeon, are on the table in front of her. They twine and untwine round the stem of the glass. I buy more wine, then we use a whole dictionary of words to say nothing. We talk about the weather, politics, the demise of Top of the Pops, and the health and happiness of our venerable cats. She even indulges me with talk of football, then without preamble, she suddenly says, I had a dead man's heart in my hands today. I squeezed and brought him back to life. Suddenly, I can't find a single word to say anything. I'm prepared for Tony Blair, the return of the Spice Girls, and Dibbler's fascination with tuna burgers, but the fundamental nature of life is so far out of my territory, it's off the map. So in the end, I ask what I want to know. What does it feel like, I ask. It's like nothing else. She drinks some more, and then she sits in silence, staring at her hands. I can think of nothing to say, so I ask her, do you care? She sips her drink and looks straight at me, staring at a point some distance inside my chest. I do what I have to do to keep them alive, and if it means caring, then yes, I care. I reach out and touch her hands. They are warm and powdered. It's a job, a good job, a great job, but it's still a job. Do you know how many patients I see in a day? I can't care for them all. She looks distractedly at the beer mat as if it contains the secret to life itself. Don't get me wrong, she says. They're not just pieces of meat. The gratification of saving a man's life is like no other. But you can't save them all. You can't let yourself get too close. But for that one moment, with his very essence in my hand, he was no longer a job. She takes her hands from mine, and when she speaks, she's no longer talking to me. She's telling me nothing. For the sake of your sanity and the sake of the job, you keep your distance. But I know when she lays her hand on her heart, that distance is 0.24 millimetres of polychloroplane with a chlorinated polymer coating. Thank you.